Welcome into a brand new edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. We are in the Rainey Fine Arts Center at, on the campus of Anderson University. I'm being told this has been here 29 years, um, and I remember when they built it. Um, we're going to be talking to some folks that are involved in the Anderson Senior Follies. It is celebrating its 29th anniversary because it performed the first time that this building was open 29 years ago. Our guest this morning is Annette Martin, and you have been here since the inception of this. But before we talk about that, tell us about you. You grew up just a little bit north of the Mason-Dixon line. I went to school at Indiana University majoring in piano pedagogy. I've been a musician since I was four and that evolved into teaching piano and also stage and screen and here we are now. Did you come from a musical f inclined family? Mama taught me how to play. I listened to, do y'all remember that Captain Kangaroo oh, jingle? Yeah. yeah, well I sat down on the piano bench and played that theme just without piano lessons and I thought she was just going to drop her drawers, but she decided at that time that I should take piano lessons, which I did. So the, the catch for my parents, and I have to give them credit for this, growing up, after dinner I had the choice of either washing the dishes or practicing piano. I chose to practice piano. Oh, how smart which was, you were. were they, well, actually, they were smart. They, they were manipulating me, and I didn't even know it. When you had an opportunity to head south, what were the circumstances, and how did you specifically end up in Anderson? I was always a musician. From the time I could barely walk, I was a musician. When I graduated from college with my degree in music, I wanted to see the world. But musicians don't make big bucks yeah. unless you're one of the big guys. So fresh out of college, I joined the airlines. I was a flight attendant with Eastern Airlines. Yes, that dates me, but that's no. what I did. Yes, so for two years. But I have to tell you, Paul, it was the most amazing thing that I could have done because I learned about people. I knew a lot about music, but I always thought people were just like me. And yeah. I realized, oh my goodness, there's a lot of different people with a lot of different ways of life. And it really was an excellent learning opportunity for me. Now, after two years, I got back into music here because there were opportunities here in the South that didn't open up in the Midwest. On your flight as an airline employee of Eastern mm -hmm. Airline, and we all loved Eastern, did any famous people come aboard your flights? Oh, several. And I have to say, a lot of them were sports people. There would be a whole team, but I didn't know anything about sports, so I didn't know who they were, but I was really nice to them anyway. And stars, yes, I think the one star I remember, Bill Cosby, he was one that I remember very well. And a couple other, uh, Henry, Win the guy that yeah. played Fonzie. Yeah, Henry, Henry Winkler. Winkler. Yeah, yeah, he was there. Those are the two that stand out the most because they were really friendly. Did you do just in the United States or were you overseas? I was mostly United States. Okay. I was flying out of New York City at the time, okay. mostly domestic, but then I flew to Puerto Rico and also Acapulco. And I just love that. We had so much fun. All right. So you, you've now concluded your tenure with Eastern Airlines. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for another job? Well, actually, it was just time to move on in life. I knew it was a temporary thing, and it was time to get serious about music again. And I had opportunities here in Anderson. So here at Anderson University, I didn't start out as producer director of Anderson Senior Follies. I started out just as an accompanist and just kind of worked my way into the university. How did you find out about Anderson College back then to start with? The rumor mills that things are happening different places and there are places that are kind of at the beginning steps of something bigger yeah. that's going to happen and that's where I wanted to be in life. It took about a year to grab a handful of folks together to get the whole package together because they needed, number one, a good sponsor so it could kick off rather nice. Anderson University paired with what became Senior Follies from the get-go. So we have been a partner since the beginning of time. And then they took some talent here in Anderson. I'm not talking professional talent. I'm just talking your neighbors in the church choir and some folks that were taking dance lessons at the Senior Center. The first show was called Meet Me at the Klondike Cafe. And it was probably more of a drama than a musical, but because of my background in music, I have to say that over the years it has evolved to be more of a musical. Plus it also involves more people on stage at the same time. And what was the community's reception to the Senior Follies that first year? 
I think everybody expected a little mom and pop get together variety show. And I think they were in awe of the talent that was on stage. But mind you, this is before the day where we had microphones yeah. here, before we had all these glorious lights, the spotlights and all the technology we have now. So those original people worked very hard to communicate their show. But there was enough interest that over the years, by the fifth year, we had increased our show from two to four shows a weekend. It got so big that now we're doing five shows a weekend to try to get over 5,000 people into Anderson just to see a senior theater production. We had incredible enthusiasm. Everybody from the Anderson Independent to radio stations to television stations, I think we're in awe of seniors could get out there and live life to its fullest because so many people often think as seniors is a time to just retire and kick back and do whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, we took it to a whole new level because we're just getting started here as seniors. We make Richard Simmons look like a couch potato. So over the period of time, I have to say our shows have gotten more professional. Uh, we've hired more and more people to help us do our shows as we do, our backdrops, our lighting, all this comes from some very professional folks. But everyone on stage, everybody that sells tickets, sponsorships, everything like that, all seniors. Looking back on the 29 years, and I'm not going to ask you to name all of them, uh, but what are some of the sh memorable shows that you look back on and they were fun to do and the audience got into it? I think one of my favorite shows was called Yesterday's Heroes. And in that show, we had just gone through some wars here in the United States and sent our boys overseas. And for the first time, I think, here in America, we were beginning to respect what all those young men and women were doing. So we did that show called Yesterday's Heroes. It got so much good press that we ended up taking the show on the road to some military bases and entertaining the troops before they were sent overseas. Paul, I can only tell you that it's one of the most amazing experiences of my life because here we entertain and folks absolutely love the show. You can tell by the applause yeah. and the energy. But there on the base, these young men knew that within a week of our show, they were gonna go over to Afghanistan Afghanistan or Kuwait and here we were like grandma and grandpa yeah. sending them off with incredible enthusiasm and patriotism off the charts. Mm. What kind of pool do you pull from for your talent base? Ultimately, once folks get in Senior Follies, our original groups, maybe they did a little senior theater, maybe they sang in the church choir, maybe they were in a barbershop quartet or a clogging group. They all came from, in the beginning, from a little entity that already existed. But over time, folks, once they were in, they stayed in, which was fabulous, and they brought their friends. And so many people that come to see our show out in the audience go, I think I could do that. And by cracky, they came up and they gave it all they got, and now they're in the show still. What goes into preparing for these shows? An enormous amount of work over a period of a year goes into just one show. It starts with a script concept committee where seniors, everyone in the cast, has the opportunity to offer suggestions. I always start with a theme. I don't want it to be a variety show, but we want it to have a show theme so there's a purpose for everything that's in the actual production. So we start with that. People within the production have the opportunity to come to that script concept meeting, offer suggestions, and then I take all those suggestions and throw them into a show. If we took all the suggestions, we would have a six hour show, but no, we don't. We turn it into a two hour production. From there, we just go on uh, and we do recording sessions here at the Anderson University Recording Studio. We do a lot of our own tracks. Uh, we do all of our rehearsals, for the most part, here in the Henderson Auditorium at Anderson University. We have auditions October before the shows open the following March to gain our new um, our new cast members, but also remember that we have people out there selling tickets, we have people out there selling sponsorships, we have people putting costumes together, we have a technical crew, we have production crews, we have marketing crews, all seniors. Having done it for as long as you have, are you surprised at the level of talent that the Anderson community can produce? What surprises me most is the level of commitment and energy and enthusiasm of the cast members. Many times I ask them to do things I'm not sure I should ask them to do, but nobody's ever said, no, nah, I can't do that. It's the generation of folks that says, okay, I'm a can-do kind of guy. I'm a can-do kind of gal, and they go for it. And the funny thing, so many of our shows, we have novelty sections um, of, of silly things that we do, just because it makes people laugh. And in our world, we need to laugh more. And within these things, we do things that when we were younger, there's no way we would have done it, let alone in public. 
But now we're seniors and we just go for it. Give me and, one example. Well, for example, one of the shows that one of the songs in this year's show is called Shaboom. Remember that old 50s yep. song? Shaboom, shaboom. Well, we do it with tires. Our men don't dance with ladies, they dance with tires. We have them dressed in their coveralls and they do this lovely dance with tires. It's too funny. How pleased are you at the end of the session to look back on what you and your folks have been able to accomplish? At the end of the show run, you can have nothing but a smile from ear to ear because I know, having seen it from the very beginning, know how much hard work, commitment, and dedication went into it. We have folks that come to rehearsals that the day before had chemotherapy. We have people that had hips replaced three weeks ago, but if they can't do the full dance, they're still up on stage going through the movement. It is such a commitment because we want to really make it the best that it can be. It doesn't have to be perfect but it is going to be the best that we can be. I think deep down, all of us have a little showbiz in us. I think deep down, everyone wants to be loved and appreciated. Deep down, everybody wants to have a friend who really cares if you showed up for work or for rehearsal. Deep down, every one of us just wants to have a connection with God and country. And here in Anderson Senior Follies, we work hard to make that happen in every rehearsal. And you've certainly developed a following over 29 years. Can you imagine 5,000 people coming yeah. every year to see a group of seniors? How about that? It's fabulous. It's amazing. It's great. Annette Martin has been our guest. We're going to come back, and we've got another guest we're going to share with you. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in this morning to Conversations with Paul Brown. We are at the uh, Randy Fine Arts Center on the campus of Anderson University, and we're talking about the 29th presentation of the Senior Follies uh, that's going to be coming up in March. Our guest now is Bud Moon, who is from Anderson. In high school, Paul, I enjoyed the stage. I, I was in all of the plays, and I was senior class president and did the senior address at graduation. But, but in college, I started debating, debating team, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed the platform. And then I joined Toastmasters, and that started my after-dinner speaking career. And that's why I joined uh, Anderson Senior Follies yeah. because I love the stage yeah. and 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 I've been in Anderson Senior Follies for 22 years. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. Did you do this when you went to Furman? Yes. And then you graduate Furman and then what where does your job take you? Okay. I had to go in the army for 2 years and then And that would have been what what year? 58 and 59. So we're done with Korea? And we're talking yes. Vietnam? Yes, yes. But in between. Okay. My station was in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I was in a Nike Hercules guided missile battery. Huh. Eight batteries semi-circling uh, Norfolk yeah. and Portsmouth. And we were we were the second line of defense for all of those all that Navy equipment. Was that a pretty interesting two years for you? Yes, yes, yes. Artillery. Was there any doubt that you would move back to upstate South Carolina when you got through with the military? <laughs> no doubt about it. But now when I went to work for Park Davis, the only opening, they offered me a job and told me the only opening was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I grabbed it. So we were in Knoxville eight years, and they had to put an experienced sales rep in this territory, and they offered it to me, knowing that someday I would like to come back across the Smoky Mountains yeah. to South Carolina, and so I grabbed it. And we do not regret coming to Anderson instead of Greenville or Greer. So 22 years ago, you're in Anderson, and you hear about something called the Senior Follies. What, what grabbed your attention? <laughs> Just to see, just to see if I could do that stuff. I knew I could talk. Yeah. But, but Paul, down through the years, Annette has let me flex my muscles and my talent. Yeah. Therefore, I'm not a dancer and I'm not a singer. I did, but I'm not good at it. But she let me be one of the resident comedians of Anderson Senior Fathers. I do the warm-up, 
the pre-show. Yeah. I love doing that. And I introduce all of the groups, and then I do a segment in the show. And uh, about five, six years ago, she asked me to do Forrest Gump. Oh, boy. And that has, that has opened up avenues for other routines of Forrest Gump. Tell us again about this year's show and how many folks are involved in it, bud. For the Record is the name of the show, and, and it's March 15, 16, 17, and 18 with two shows on Saturday the 17th. And there are 78 swinging, laughing, smiling, talented seniors in this year's show. And about, about 12 of us are newbies. We, we have some to drop out every year sure. due to age and illness. Yeah. And always, always we have a new, uh, a new group to, to want to join, and they are welcomed with open arms. Talk about when rehearsals start, how often you do it, and what a kind of a commitment it really is. Okay. We, we come the first Monday and Tuesday in October for a familiarization. Annette has the show already in arms. And then the first Monday and Tuesday in November, the first Monday and Tuesday in December, we start rehearsal. And then January, February, and March, <laughs> we live here at Rainy Fine Arts Auditorium and, uh, and sometimes in the Belk Center, uh, practicing, practicing, practicing. Because we have some choreographed numbers and some singing numbers that you don't just come off the street and do. Mm -hmm. We have to work. What kind of a bond do you build among the performers? Wow. Paul, I'm so glad you asked that. We are a family. We are a closely knit family. And folks that come in, strangers end up being accepted? Sure. <laughs> I mean accepted from the word go. Annette, Annette remembers everybody's name and she introduces all of the newbies and, and she fits them in the show and, and, they, and they audition. Do you sing, do you dance, or do you tell jokes? And she, she uh, pits them in, uh, in, the, in the areas of their greatest interest. You, you talked about the shows. Now, the, we kick it off on Thursday, March 15th at 7.30. Yes. And you were telling me earlier that you've got a lot of churches that have already committed. Tell me about that. Yes. We will have about 60 to 68 groups, and they're mostly church groups. Some are senior citizens like Malden, the Senior Center, but most of our bust-in groups, and they're, they're bust-in, uh, are, are, are church groups. For example, last year at the Saturday matinee at 11 o'clock, we had 42 groups signed in, bust-in, and the thing about it, Paul, they, they had eaten early lunch in Anderson. Anderson benefits sure. from senior filing. Sure they and do. before I forget it, there are two things that I want, to, I want to tell you and Anderson. Number one, this could possibly be Anderson University's number one profit center. We, we, thanks to the public, mm -hmm. we bring in a lot of money mm -hmm. to the Rainy Fine Arts Center. And it has been said, it has been said that Anderson Senior Follies is the number two fine arts event in the state of South Carolina, second only to Spoleto. That's saying something, isn't it? It is. And we're honored. We're humbled by the fact. That we are so popular. Yeah. How do folks get tickets, bud? Okay, the ticket office, we, we've got posters everywhere, and the ticket office is open uh, five mornings a week. And, and believe it or not, most tickets are promoted by cast members. It is amazing how many tickets our cast members sell. But just call the Anderson University Fine Arts Center, and, and they'll switch you to the ticket office. And, and you can buy them online? Yes. We at, have $15 uh, tickets, and up front, we have $20 tickets. And if you're interested in getting them online, it's AndersonSeniorFollies.org. That's yes. pretty easy to 
to remember. Yes. Bud, thank you so much for what you and Miss Annette and all the seniors have done in, over the last 29 years and providing a really quality form of entertainment and in the process showcasing the wonderful seniors that have decided to call our area home and wow. sharing their talent with us. Yes, thank you for coming, Paul. It's been fun. Thanks again for tuning in. We want to invite you to be back with us next week, same time for our next edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care, everybody.